Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador. Today's live show is going to be so inspiring. Now, if you watched my show yesterday, you might have seen this. Whoops, like where did I go? We took one sweater, actually two sweaters, cut it up and put it into one. Okay, that's one refashioning, right? But you want to bling it up? Wait till you see what Kim Montanese has for you. And grab those old ties out of, well, they don't even have to be old. They could be new. <laughs> Wait till you see what she has for you. So grab your notebook, grab your tea. We're live streaming on Brothers Sewing, Facebook, and YouTube pages. We can see all your comments. So see you in a second. Hello, Kim. Hey, <laughs> How are you? I'm so excited for today's show. Thanks. Me too. I can't wait to show some of this. You've got embellishing, 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 but you always have cool things. But what the audience doesn't know yet is that I got to see a sneak preview and it's very exciting. You are going to be so inspired to refashion your garments and all those ties. I'm going to go raid wins tie drawer that he never uses anymore. I don't think he'll even notice. I'll probably ask his permission in case it's like a really expensive one. <laughs> yeah, good <laughs> idea. <laughs> so how are you? I'm good. How's it going over there? Good. I'm, I'm and just I, so excited, Angela. When I go to shows quite often, um, I take my jackets, of course, my samples, and everybody's like, oh my gosh, like, how did you do this? How, oh, these are ties and, you know, they're so excited and there's just not time to show right there how to do it. So I thought part of this, um, part of this session, I thought maybe we'll talk about the ties, how to prepare them, how to attach them, how to cover the raw edges, things like that. Um, then I have some other things to show too, but I just really, for people that were interested in upcycling and doing different things. Now, my husband has very expensive ties, a few that he's gotten as gifts. I would never take one without asking. I get <laughs> will or, you know, secondhand stores. Usually you can get them for about 50 cents, 75 cents. I'm a senior citizen now, so I get them cheaper on certain days. So, um, Hey, there's a bonus. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, I kind of like being a senior citizen. <laughs> it's been cool. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, those ties there look gorgeous. And uh, you have so many different garments with ties that mm -hmm. I would have never thought of doing this with them. So I'll let you take it away. You can either show however, if you want to show some of those garments first or how to do the ties. I, I just, they're absolutely amazing. Okay, perfect. So I'll start with by showing the garments. So this is one, a lot of you might have seen it if, if I see you at a show. So this was just a jacket that I bought at the secondhand store. It was a cute jacket already. The front was already like this. And I just added the ties and the trim and the buttons around the neck and the pre-made um, trim around the, you know, the cuff. Now we could have also embroidered on the cuff. We could have made our own freestanding lace on the cuff. Um, but, but I wanted something that was kind of quick, something that everybody could do. So I found this design in ibroidery.com. It's the queen bee and it's under the uh, category of the large hoop um, designs. So I don't know if you can really see the background has a quilting, a fill pattern, and it's like the honeycomb. And that was built into the um, luminaire. Oh, wow. That's so, beautiful. So I used this as a stamp and then did the fill pattern. I did this on denim and then cut it out. And then I had a raw edge here that I had to cover. So I have a little button problem. <laughs> um, see here, one has fallen off too, but um, this one gets around quite a bit. So I'm not surprised that one has fallen off. But so I just covered up that edge with buttons, but you can cover it with anything that you have lying around that you think is kind of fun, little beads or lace bits, or you can make prairie points that I've done on some of them. And then down here, I just wanted to bring in some of that blue to tie in the denim. So I use blue buttons to, you know, just in the little points there. 
this jacket had had a small peplum on it already. So I just left that on there. I thought it was cute. But anyway, so this is one that gets a lot of attention at shows with the embellishment. Beautiful. Um, but this one was actually a long vest. And they talked me into it at the store. And I said at the store, I'm not a vest person. I think they look awesome on everybody else. I just don't wear vests, you know. And she said, oh, but it looks really good. You wear your skinny jeans and, you know, blah, 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 and all that stuff. So I was suckered into it. So I bought this long vest and never wore it because I just felt uncomfortable. But I decided if I add ties to the bottom, I can turn it into a little jumper. So yes. here, um, I'm going to show you in a minute, but along the edge there where the ties are, again, there was a raw edge where I zigzagged the ties on and all of those little tabs are cut off of the backs of the ties. So when I show you how to take them apart in a second, make sure that you save all of that stuff because you're going to love it. And then, I, you know, Kim, I would have tossed those labels. I wouldn't have even thought anything about that. And that, what a great use for it. And then around the collar too. Wow. You know, just continuity of your, of your theme. So I just did that. And then of course this one just had plain old boring buttons. So I found these Cupid doll buttons <laughs> and just replaced the buttons. And then so I found, I found this cute blouse to wear with it. And it has a cute, cute little cuff. So that's really cute. I actually, so by the way, going back to your other jacket, I put the website below that she was mentioning in case you're new here. Uh, it's ibroidery.com is where she found that other design. Uh, somebody wanted to know, do, have you actually worn that jacket? They want to know. The jacket? Marcia wants to know. Yeah. This one? Okay. My, my goal of this year is to lose enough weight that I can wear this jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I also, I also have high heels that have bees on them as well. So they go with the jacket. So I want to be able to wear both of those by next year at this time. Okay. We have to have a party if you can. That would be awesome. Okay. So my answer is no, I have not worn it, but a <laughs> lot of other people have worn it and they take pictures with it on and um it's just been a lot of fun inspiring you know people go oh i could do that i could totally do that it's like yeah yeah i know <laughs> right absolutely and ann just loves what to do with the what a great thing to do with your buttons i so agree ann <laughs> okay. awesome so i kind of made a little ramp here so you can see so when i look at ties you have to look at the tie First for color, if you're only going to, I mean, I have bins of these all different colors and I just kind of went nuts with it. There might be a tie problem also, but when you're <laughs> looking at ties and you're only going to make one project, of course, you're going to look at the colors that you want to use and how they go together, how they work together. Um, you're also going to try to find at the very end here, somewhere along this edge or at the very end, there's a tiny tag and it says either all silk. 100% silk. Some of them say um, handmade, all silk. So make sure that they're all silk. If there's any polyester or anything else in there, they're just going to be stiff and they're not going to be, you know, flowy the way we want them to be. So we're going to start by looking for this tiny little stitch right there. These are really loosely put together. They're pretty easy. So we're going to clip this little stitch and pull it apart, pull it open. And then usually these tags are just one or two little stitches, almost like a little basting stitch or a slip stitch. And we're just gonna pop that off too. And then here is just, I don't know if you can see it on there, but it's just a little string, a real, almost like a bobbin thread. See how easily it comes up? And once you find it, sometimes you can just pull on it. And at this point, I kind of look at it at this point when it's gathered and I say, oh, that might be something cute on the collar. 
you know, oh, on the yeah. collar around the cuff, maybe hang on to it. But if I really want it for the bottom, I'm just going to keep pulling it and finally pull that out. And when you get that whole long thread out of there, you're going to open it up and pull out the interfacing all the way down. See how easily that's come out of there. At the other end, there's one of those little tack downs. <clears throat> and again, the little basting thread. When I bring home a load of ties, I usually just do this in front of the television or, you know, put a movie on or something and just kind of just do that upstairs. So we pull this whole piece of interfacing. Don't throw this away. We can do another show about that. So are most, uh, when you open those, would you say most of the interfacing is freestanding? It's not fused or do you find both? I haven't found any that's fused yet. Some okay. of them have like a little tacking stitch up inside of the point or sometimes right against here, but, but it's, it's easy. It's just as easy as what I just showed you. Wow. And you want to just clip off these little tags to save for later. I have an apothecary jar where I save all of these. Nice. And for here, I just brought these to show you. So these are all my tags. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've worked on quite a few ties there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so at this point, if, if, you know, sometimes most of the time the ties are in pretty good shape. They do have a little edge here. And then from here up, it's all raw edge. So I like to um, press the ties, just press them. If there's stains on them, this is a good time to wash them. I would rather wash them. I wash them in cold water and like a, a gentle uh, laundry detergent, lay them flat to dry and then press them. I haven't lost one yet, really. I mean, I thought silk would be kind of weird, but it really hasn't been a problem. Um, if they're too gross, I don't buy them at all. So, um, and then I sew them together, starting right here. See where the finished edge is? I just let that be, and then start from here and sew up, and sew up on either side, so that when they're put together, and then you can use a gathering stitch. See, so whatever's going to be in between these two pieces is going to be a finished edge. And then this will be the seam right here. So even though they're kind of flappy, you do still want that finished edge. And then when they're gathered, they're just so pretty when they're all gathered together. And um, then you cover them with, you know, with your lace. So I was telling Angela before we started here that I actually used the rest of the denim from this little skirt. I used it for another project, but I'm thinking, wouldn't this be cute to have that as a little skirt? And that was put, so cute. Oh my gosh. I mean, you could do lace. You could do very elegant trim on it, that shiny trim. You could use your tags. Um, I save everything, Angela. I had a pair of really high black leather boots. And when they oh. finally gave out, I cut the little bows off the back because I know I can use those on some. <laughs> hey, you know what? There's a big, a big deal about repurposing. And I think you get a big number one bonus button because you do. You save everything, but you reuse it in such a great way. This is so cute. Well, it's, it's been a lot of fun and it makes it unique. So I think that's what's helpful. Um, also, if you find cute buttons like this, these are Alice in Wonderland buttons. Oh my gosh, those are adorable. I mean, that just gives personality. So whenever you find something really odd, it's, I mean, I like to just kind of hang on to it. I stick it onto one of my boards in the other room. Um, and the other thing here, I'll show you this one. I started this one. I haven't finished it. But again, there's that B and I'm putting the buttons around. And, and that's, the one, that's the one from iBroidery, right? This is the iBroidery B, the exact same B. 
Wow. And I'm going to also put prairie points around here overlapping just to make it a little different. This one won't have ties on it, probably. I don't, I don't think yet. And then the front, as far as trim goes, and these are all recycled um, jackets. Wow. I used some drapery fabric for the little ruffle, zigzagged it onto the collar, and then just added a piece of ribbon to cover up that raw edge. So cute. So that's just another idea. And let's see what else I'm going to show you here. Um, no, not that one yet. I have to show you this one first. Okay, no judgment, okay? <laughs> no judgment. So years ago, we had an ugly, ugly Christmas, you know, thing. So this was my ugly Christmas jacket. And that's, I have, so, that's not ugly. <laughs> <laughs> It had ugly buttonholes, and I'll show you how to finish that in a little bit. I added spiders on the back. It says punk the halls <laughs> with candy canes. But instead of putting ties on this one, I just decided to use these flaps instead. So these are just really pretty drapery fabrics. And I put two pieces of rectangular fabric right sides together, stitched all the way around the edges, left one edge open, clipped the corners, flip them right side out, press them, and then just layered them. Let me see if I can find the middle here. Just layered them in all different lengths. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Oh yeah, Karina, I thought you'd be, I was wondering if you saw that skull. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, my God. So I love this. And since I've done this one, now I wanna do like a leather, a long leather skirt and put this at the bottom, like a little car wash of oh. ankles, maybe longer in the back, I'm thinking maybe. Oh yeah, I love that that is the car wash, actually. It looks just like when I <laughs> that. I, okay, so I can imagine <laughs> all my little nieces and nephews, if I was wearing that, they would just be like, yep. hanging on my, <laughs> hey, that's, that's, that has a question for you. Do all the decorations make the jacket heavier? Some of them do. Uh, the bee jacket is not really that much heavier because it's not uh, it's silk, you know, it's not heavy. Um, right. Some of the others, I have one upstairs that has a lot of zippers and, and a lot of heavy buttons. That one is definitely heavier, but um, you know, it's, I think it's worth it. <laughs> it's kind of worth yeah. it. Uh, Patty, I told everybody say that that ugly Christmas jacket is not ugly. It's super cute. <laughs> I, I agree a hundred percent. Well, I don't do sweaters, so I said, can I just do jackets instead? Because I have a lot of jackets. Oh, so, gosh. So here's another one. Again, please, no judgment. Um, this was for the early Christmas. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. It says, jingle all the way, making spirits bright. And that was all, you know, from fonts. But what I wanted to show you was, even though this one doesn't have ties... Let me get that fur out of the way. This is ridiculous. There we go. <laughs> Even though this one doesn't have ties, I still used the lace and the little oh buttons to, you know, to tie it all together. So cute. And then after it was stitched on, I just cut away the jacket underneath so that you could appreciate how pretty the lace really is. I think that's absolutely, I'm with you, Lorraine. Amazing. I, I just want that faux fur going on. <laughs> oh, this gets on everything. You have to put this in a dry cleaner bag. It gets all over everything. It has little oh. bows on the front, little jingle bells. <laughs> I'm with you guys. Yes, it does jingle, Anne. Did you hear it? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I agree, Zena. I think that should be our challenge this year. I never finished my ugly sweater because I I just lost interest and I really wanted to wear it because I wanted to spend time doing it. And also it was during COVID and I couldn't find, well, I love that fur, but I, I wanted to find one of those long boas, you know, with the fur and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I gave up. So maybe this year I'll bring it out of the closet. Who knows? You should have called me. I think I have one. <laughs> I'll call you next time. <laughs> I just, you know, I go in after the holiday and I buy stuff that's left over and just stuff it in a bag. So, oh, note to self: anyone looking for boa, let's call Kim. <laughs> <laughs> or buttons, or ties. 
yeah, pretty much all that stuff. So, um, let's see. Well, I have another, I have something else to show you. Everybody loves your projects. You always are so creative too. I agree. There's more coming because she's going to take you to the sewing machine and show you actually how to do some of this too. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. So I started, um, I have all this beautiful fabric and I don't know that I'll ever use it as yardage, but I love the motifs. So I started just fusing it on, you know, putting fusible on the back just in case I need to have something with this stuff on it. So I have this whole big box of all these beautiful. Is that just fabric that you put fusible on the back or were they motifs that you found or where did you find those? They're, it's just yardage of fabric. Oh my gosh. Okay. And some of it, oddly, I've gotten some of it, you know, when you have a guild and they have like an ugly fabric exchange. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to come to your guild if you're giving fabric away. Cause what you think is ugly is really, really cute. <laughs> <laughs> so I scored on a lot of those. So what I did with this little jacket, so, you know, not everybody has an embroidery machine but almost everybody has an iron and you can get fusible. So I just took this jacket and I put some of my cutout motifs and just pin them to the back of this jacket. It's not quite done yet. I'm not sure I'm happy with this, but I'm, I'm getting there and I'm going to free motion this and I'll take you over to the machine in a second and show you that, but I'm going to free motion this after it's ironed on so I can take the pins out and then do some couching over it with the vines and all the little curly Q vines and probably some dimensional leaves too. So I'm still playing with this one. Oh, that's cute. I'm not ready. I'm not quite ready to commit on this one, but it's getting there. But you, so we're, we're actually seeing your action in progress. You lay it all out and kind of figure out where it's going to go before you, you don't just start pressing. You kind of piece it together Right. And figure out, and that's beautiful. So, yeah, so I'm going to look at that. Sometimes I have to hang it up. When I get one section I really like, I'll go ahead and press that down because I like it mm -hmm. and then add to it. And the beautiful thing about these is if there's a stem that kind of goes in the wrong direction, you can clip that off, stick it where you want, like put it up behind and stick it back on. Nobody will ever know. So today I'm going to show you on this little top, Again, a secondhand top. This is a piece of fused um, fabric. I have it pinned here to the front neckline, but it has little stems sticking out so I can trim all those stems off. I can cut this last little heart off and angle it to continue up the, you know, up the neckline if I wanna do that. Also on the back, oh. I've got this on the back. So this is what I'm going to show you. So Angela, if you want to take me out for a second so I don't make everybody seasick, I'll go over to the other machine, okay? Okay, that sounds good. I'll take okay. your questions while you're moving around. Just give me a thumbs up when you're there. Uh, I, I agree. A great imagination. Ed's totally beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I was laughing with her. I saw Zena. Was it you, Zena? Or I, I missed who said that, that they love the fact that she made something and she's waiting to wear it next year. I have a handful of those. I have a handful of those that I found a way though, and I'm going to be showing on my show what, uh, one of these days, how to add to the sides of a garment for those that need a little more room. Uh, I'll have to get Kim in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you don't want to waste them. You've done so much work. So Kim's getting her machine set up and then she's going to show you how she worked on that back. I don't know which one, which jacket was my favorite. I would take any of those all day long. All right, I think she's just about there. And go ahead and ask your questions and comments too. We are on Brother Sewing Facebook and YouTube page. If you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. You'll never miss a show. If the schedules change or things move around, uh, you'll always get that. And if you're on Facebook, like and follow. All right, you ready? She's ready. I see my, I see your thumbs up. Oh, <laughs> oh look how beautiful that is. Okay, so I'm going to be working on the 3100 right now. And all I've done is I threaded it up to the normal way. I selected a straight stitch. And when I drop the feed dogs, 
it tells me that I need this O foot, the open toe foot. So that's how I knew how to put the, you know, to put the open toe foot on. So I used to love thread painting before I had embroidery. I still kind of like thread painting, but I don't have to do it as much as I used to. But anyway, so I'm going to try not to get my hand in the way here. How am I going to do this? Like that? Can you see it? Yes, we can see. Okay, let me see if I can take it up just a little bit. And come down. I love those colors. While you're doing that, um, a couple people said, did you cut those designs with a scan and cut, fussy cut, or did you just cut them or both? Dang it, I could have, but no, I didn't. I that's another one of those t sit in front of the TV projects, you know. Got I was it. Just sitting there cutting them, and but I could have cut it on the scan and cut. That's a really great point. It, just leave it up to the brother fans; they'll remind you of what that's product. Right. You have. <laughs> <Got> that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to. Um, okay, I have my feed dogs dropped, so now I can move it, and I'm just gonna. I'm just going to hit the gas and I'm going to tack down the thread and then I'm going to start moving slowly following the lines and projects like this I kind of like it looking a little bit messy if you're an expert machine you know free motion quilter you can go for it be perfect I just really like that kind of messy boho look I'm using a decorative thread You're basically just stitching around each design to keep it into place, just around each edge of the design. Right. I'm just going around the edges. If I want to get super fancy, I can turn it this way and go around each of the oops, each of the petals. You can add as much detail as you want. I also have my needle down so that when I stop, it's not going to be, you know, popping back up at me. So I don't have to manage that. absolutely love thread painting. I mean, it's it's literally like painting or designing just with thread. I mean, that's just gorgeous. And you did that with the free arms. So you could slide that top under there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can go all the way to the bottom on this. And it, it would be just fine. Wow. If I had something really difficult, I could probably open the seam. Let's see, where are we? Hello. <laughs> Don't, don't look at my messy room. I think Kim's coming back. She turned us off. <laughs> uh, I'll ask her. Hey, Kim, come back to us. Uh, did she have stabilizer on the back? That's a good question. I think, I'm guessing she did not because, Caroline, nice to see you, by the way. I'm guessing she did not, but we'll ask her. Because she had that fusible on it. Uh, so, Kim, are you back with us? I'm back. Hey, uh, do you have fusible on the back of that? I do actually. Yeah, I have a, an iron on just a just like a a lightweight garment interfacing. Okay. And then so I, I was can, wrong. I can trim away. Well, it's a That's... lightweight fabric. If I was doing this on denim, probably not. But because it's a lightweight, it's like a real lightweight linen. So I thought it needed something, you know, to hold that down. Gorgeous. Oh yeah, and then oh I see. So then you just place it, press it, and then beautiful. Yep. And that's just a pre-made or pre pre-bought top. Right. It was also secondhand. Um <laughs> yep. It's a size medium. It's second hand from the, you know, place down the street. So cute. <laughs> that's a first thread painting didn't turn out so well. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you there. It takes a lot of practice. Actually, the one thing that, a tip that I got that was really fun is you sit across the table from a friend, 
you have the friend hold a pencil and you hold the paper in front of them and have them lower the pencil and you move the paper and that oh. will, that'll help get your brain kind of in the in the mode oh. of, of um because it's the opposite of what you would think you know usually we move the pencil we don't move right. the paper but here we're having to move the surface not the you know the the writing implement sort of so so that was yeah. a good tip and you know we used to practice that way too that's awesome. You know, remember the fabric dream frame that we had? I loved using that. Now, you couldn't use it for a small top like that because you couldn't get inside. But that was a great way to learn how to do thread painting. It was like just using right. the machine. I would love to know who here has that because that was a great, uh, quite a few years ago, I think is when yeah. it started. But so, so here's the other thing. If you still have the dream fabric frame, um, I used to, I used to, on my fabric, I would trace when it was still big yardage, I would trace the pattern pieces onto the fabric, put it in my dream fabric frame, do my stitching in the frame when it was still a whole big piece, and then mm -hmm. press it and then cut out the pieces and then make the garment. So it's like, it's almost like um, making your own embroidered fabric as yardage, but it starts out plain. And, and that was really, that was fun. That's I, that's how I like to do it too. I'll mm -hmm. trace my sleeve and then embellish down here. Mm -hmm. when you're making Fired. I might have to go work on that. Yeah. <laughs> Julianne says, I want to see your room. Oh, I got a preview earlier, Julianne, and it's really cute. <laughs> okay. okay, so not today. <laughs> Everybody's saying, yeah, not today. We'll bring her back for that. We'll have another. You can go back. Uh, you were on in January, I think, showing your room to everybody. Yeah, but I didn't realize we were doing it that day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just have to explain. I did other things before I was with brother. So I have all that stuff. And then I have all the brother stuff. And I also upcycle um, vintage chairs. So I've got all that stuff. So there's usually all that stuff is out all at the same time. <laughs> and, and it is today. So it's a big mess. And then I've got the 10 needle and that stuff is all over the place. So so, but yeah. it's in daily use almost, except for the chair stuff. Everything else is in daily use. Very nice. All right. Any more questions for Kim? I'm just checking. Well, Kim, do you want to take us back to your other machine? Yes. Give me, give me just a second. I'll get over there and show you the next thing. All right. See you in a second. All right. I see somebody asking, you were, where was Tuesday's show? Well, there was a glitch in the video. I don't know. So it will be re-uploading, uh, but for some reason, uh, it came down right away. So I apologize for that. If you watched it live, you got a little bonus that, you know, you never know about live shows. But uh, we do have the recording, and we're going to be trying to fix that to get it re-uploaded. So uh, you'll just have to be patient on that because it was a wonderful show. Cindy making, well, not making, embroidering shoes. <laughs> she is working hard and now she's taking us back to a different machine because she's going to show you how to do those really cool embroidered buttonholes and is that Karina I'll have to ask her when she comes back if those skulls were on embroidery and if they're not I'll have her email them to me and I can uh, get tell you where she got those from I know you would like those I saw your skulls that you embroidered down your sleeve looked very cool all right she's just about there I know it does the tour the tour of how everybody stores their their things. I did some spring cleaning here and I I used a lot of their tips. My P touch used a lot of tape. <laughs> All right, Kim is ready. Let's bring her back up here. Hey Kim. Hey Angela. So I'm back. Okay. What machine are you on now? Now I'm on the XP. XP2. Okay. So I brought in this buttonhole. And I should probably have shown you the project. So I was at the secondhand store and I found this London Fog raincoat. For... Which by the way, London Fog is no affiliation to Brother. It is Sorry. a different brand, but just yeah. FYI. I found this really nice raincoat <laughs> <laughs> and it was only like $10, but it had these really boring buttonholes. Let me find the buttonhole here. So my plan for this is a full, it is a full length um, raincoat. And along the hem, I'm gonna do a, a tall lace design and up the sleeves and I'm gonna change the buttonholes, you know, make them pretty and then do something around the collar. It's gonna be more soft than, 
than some of the funky stuff. It'll be more tone on tone, but that's kind of what's in the works. So now I want to put this buttonhole on that um, coat. So we could scan it, but I'm not going to scan it today. I'm going to go straight to embroidery and I'm going to touch our um, projector. And then I'm going to place the coat right under the projector. Let's see if you can see it. And I'll get you a close up as soon as I get it positioned. Oh, we is, can see that great. And this is a sticky um, stabilizer. I think it's a sticky cutaway. And now you can see I can position that pretty darn close, right over the old buttonhole. And then using the arrow buttons, I can just move it a little at a time until it's exactly where I need it to be. Now I'm gonna miss this part, so I'm gonna scooch it over here a little bit more and maybe down a little bit. Oh, maybe up a little bit. And then I'm going to rotate it a 10th and a 10th. Okay, it's almost there, almost perfect. Okay, so now when I start to sew this, can you see how exactly perfect wow. that's gonna be? I love that. And by the way, I love it. <laughs> so just so any of you know, uh, the rainbow does not come with the machine. It's it's whenever we're live, it always looks like there's a rainbow, but it makes it a lot of fun, right? <laughs> I know. It's like, maybe we should just program that in so everybody has a rainbow. <laughs> Super cute. Everybody's loving these buttonholes. Oh, Ibby, you have that buttonhole. All right. So, I mean, there's so many different things you can do, but the fact that you can change these these old kind of i have a swing swing coat in fact that i put great big buttonholes on because they have those great big saucer size buttons and it's so much fun um it's just another thing you can do you can also put buttonholes across uh, a whole hemline or across the hem of your jeans and then weave ribbon through it and tie a big bow at your ankle uh, that might be cute with the funky buttonholes um, so many different things you can do just with buttonholes and ribbon and um, you know, some of this trim. Oh, that's cute. So now when you just go to embroider that and when you have the top in there, is there any extra fabric you need to put on that or anything extra to make sure that that embroider is just fine or you're just basically covering up that other buttonhole and you're fine? Uh, this one I think is going to be fine. The fabric is pretty stable. Um, if I was doing something that was kind of ravelly, Mm -hmm. I would I would remove the old buttonhole, like like denim. If it's heavy and it's kind of older and it's going to ravel a little bit, I would I would cut away the old buttonhole, just pick it out, just the thread part, not the fabric. Okay. And then and put like seal that seam down so that all those little thready ends aren't going to come out. And then I I might I don't know I would have to see it something that's real ravelly maybe put a stabilizer like a wash away stabilizer on top or something but um and then mark where the buttonhole is i would you know it's an individual thing but most of the time i just do it like you just saw just hit okay. the button and sew and it's been fine that sounds good i'm watching all the comments everybody loves this idea all of these jackets are so inspiring by the way uh i have a quick question for you though karina's on the edge of her seat, did you happen to get that skull on eyebroidery? No. Okay, no. But if she knows where it is, then you can email me and I can send tell Karina where it is. Because it's probably if it's not on eyebroidery, it's not a brother product. So Karina, stay tuned. <laughs> All right. Everybody's saying this is so much fun. So much fun. So I think, Angela, I think I've covered everything. Oh. Do you guys have any more questions for her on the ties? Because this was a great lesson. Oh, there's the boa. That's the one I wanted, except I wanted it in white. <laughs> I have a pink one and a black one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like pink. Well, I have to tell you, Kim, this was absolutely a fantastic lesson. I know there were a lot of people that rolled in later. So remember, uh, save it to your page, or if you're on YouTube, you can save it to watch later. You can also subscribe to the channel. You won't miss any shows. 
everything you always show, Kim, for refashioning, repurposing, which is really a big deal right now because you can, I'm cleaning out my closet. I've got a ton of stuff that I'm cutting up and making different sizes. <laughs> but I love the ties. And I think that would make, especially the car wash one. What was your favorite jacket, everyone? I'd love to know while we're wrapping this show up. Everybody say thank you, thank you. Oh, uh, one, more, one more thing. If you're using the ties and you want to make like a long skirt, just be aware. I've seen people that do like a long ankle length skirt and the ties are all bias. So by the time they get up to the skinny end, it's kind of twisty, you know, they almost need to be at least partially stabilized so that they lay nicely. But okay. um, that's been a problem with people that want to use more than like a 12 or 15 inch length of the ties is that they get twisty just because it was, um, it was all on the bias. You know, as you were saying that, I was thinking you could put little drapery weights in the bottom of each one, but then guess what? You talk about clanging. <laughs> Don't go to the airport with that skirt on. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking of putting, um, let me just grab one real quick. Here. <laughs> I could just see it right now. In fact, Kim, I think you should wear one of those just so we can watch you go through the airport security. Go security? I get in oh. enough trouble in airport security. <laughs> I have, I took one of my erasers, you know, those gray, like they look like clay, but they're an eraser and you can form it to get real tiny little spots erased, but it yeah. looks like, it looks like an explosive thing. Apparently I didn't know that <laughs> man step away from the bag. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> and I had my sketch pad in that had the coil, you know, the little on the binding, the little coil thing. And they're like, oh no, this woman's bringing a bomb on board. <laughs> but you I never know thinking, what you're sewing. I was thinking on this one, right where the points are, it would be so cute to put like just a little gold bead at the point. Beautiful. You know, just to yeah, that would keep it, that would keep it hanging enough weight right. to keep it down without, you know, going overkill. You know what's but but Angela, it doesn't they don't flip up at all. They, they don't just, no, they just they stay down. I thought this. I thought it would be a problem too, and it wasn't. I used to wear this actually, um, and I will again by next year at this time. I just love these buttons. I love those buttons. That is really really cute. But I might have to embroider on the back because this one has nothing on the back. I can't believe it. But um, but yeah, I just thought the little gold dot at the bottom would be really cute. That would and be very fun. And to put two pieces of fabric together, put two finished edges together and put the little bead in between to hold it together and have it kind of open in between. So, so there's a lot more, you know, a lot more ideas. So we need to Very do this. Fun. Well, thank you so much. And everybody says they, now, by the way, if you want to go back and watch any of Kim's shows, go to YouTube. That's the easiest place to find it. And under brother videos, there's like a link at the top. I think it says live video. So go under live videos and you can see every episode of all of the episodes. What are we on? 272 or, and we didn't even start counting for the first like 50. <laughs> there are a lot. And you can find some of her old shows too, where she was doing a lot of refashioning. You always have such creative ideas. Well, thank you. And and I go back and rewatch them too, because I'm not always av available, you know, to watch every day, you know, every week. So I know it's funny you say that because you're a brother educator and I uh, love watching them because I actually learn new things and you even watch them. I, you, It's amazing. We could put 10 of us together, mm -hmm. give us one project and we would all do it differently. Somehow well, something different. Well, I think that quilt challenge thing that proved it. I mean, we all got the same block and everybody did something different. That and was fun. I think we have another panel coming up too, if I'm not, if I'm not thinking wrong. I'm very excited about that. So yes, summer schedule's coming. Well, Kim, thank you again. Everybody's leaving comments on their favorite jacket. I think it's kind of even amongst all of them. <laughs> well, everyone, thank you for watching. I cannot believe it's Thursday. So I guess we will see you on Tuesday. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, hopefully we'll get that video from Tuesday re-uploaded. We'll get whatever kink was out of it and um, be back. And Kim, you have a great week. And thank you, you too. Happy sewing. Thanks, bye. Bye. I'm afraid I have a confession to make. I'm actually here undercover. <gasps> March. Now. <gasps> I can't.
came to Quilt Club to gain the knowledge and insight to help build the best collection of quilting machines brothers made. Whoa. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you I was undercover. Can you find it in your hearts to forgive me? Let's quilt. <laughs>